What's up Simonics, welcome to a new vlog and this week I got a special topic for you because lately the Ionic View Beta, like the second beta, um, was released and I was waiting for this kind of long time because I've used Angular now for about 5-6 years and I really want to dig into a new project uh, with a different framework. I played around with the idea of using React but I somehow preferred using Vue. I read a lot of good things about Vue and today I really want to give you my first impression of Ionic Vue. Uh, bear in mind that I'm really like an, a developer without any Vue experience. I really used Angular uh, for a lot of time. My view on this whole top might be a bit biased by Angular. Everything that you will see is not really a Vue tutorial and don't follow my recommendations, but I hope you as I guess mostly Angular users might be interested in a different framework. Let's check it out, uh, let's see some code and let's talk about if Vue is something that you should consider for future Ionic projects. If you want to give Ionic Vue a try, uh, you currently have to install the uh, CLI at testing release. So the beta, it's not yet released, might change in a few m weeks, months, I really don't know about the release time. You can then go ahead and start a new application like usual with a template and then you specify the type view instead of Angular and the tag view beta to get the current latest release. Ionic uh, view will be based on view 3 which is also in beta so uh, I was really happy about uh, Ionic using really the latest uh, tools here and also you should use capacitor by now but we've talked about that in the past. So this gives us a nice application. Um, maybe I'm also able to find the preview right here which looks in the beginning exactly the same. So that's Ionic Serve for a view application. Really, we don't see any difference to an Angular application. Now, when we look at the code, there are a few things uh, I noticed. First of all, uh, okay, well, we also got a main TS, but view apps are bootstrapped a bit different uh, from Angular applications. So uh, you plug in some plugins where the Ionic View plugin comes into play and you actually also use a router, which I found pretty cool. Uh, I think this is something new from View 3. Um, you mount the application and then it's basically created in this uh, DOM element. So we don't have an index HTML. <laughs> I was really looking for that file all the time but we got an app.view which looks like a bit like the app template but now um, for all the files that we got all the view files i found it really kind of strange that we got the template in here then we got these script text for uh, HTML, uh, for javascript in here and for some views like the home we actually also have the styling so everything's in that one file it's something i just had uh, to figure out how it works but then um, things are actually fine if you check out the router uh, you will see a lot of differences to the Angular router, so you can specify path, redirects, uh, you could also use lazy loading in here if you want to. I just wanted to show this because I think it's a really important feature we got in Angular. Um, so let's call this one new, new, and they got this cool syntax with the add which basically means go from the top of your uh, application into that folder. So you don't need a strange path where you have a lot of dots and you need to figure out on which level you are. I think this is actually a really great addition. So let's create this new item.view. Actually, the CLI isn't creating these things yet. Um, maybe it's just because we uh, only need to create a new file and that's it or perhaps it's um well perhaps it's just too early because i think uh just like the pages are created in angular i think a bare template of a page could be generated through the cli i think that would definitely be uh kind of great a bit different syntax of course it's a different framework but the routing stuff looks to me quite the same now for our pages, of course, um, the HTML markup is different when you're using a different template, but still, it's still HTML. For React, you would have uh, JSX in here, which is a tiny bit different. This is pretty much HTML, and these things are just, uh, I would say, the view kind of way of doing things. 
um, you can see this in other places. Let me copy in another snippet because I'm really kind of bad, but I went through this. Uh, I kind of did this. You just have to figure out how things look. Let me remove this container and add something else. I think, yeah, multiple formatters, whatever. Just format the damn code. Um, this already kind of looks like Angular, but also, um, my highlighting, my linting inside my editor wasn't working great. I installed the package, but that wasn't working yet so far. One main difference is really that you need to import all the components that you're going to use in a page. So if I would now want to use an ion fab, I would have to go and add the ion fab. Uh, I would have to add the ion fab button. I would have to add ion icon. Um, and then I would somehow need to specify this icon, um, yeah, which is another import to import the icon. Where did I put these imports? What's why? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess they need to go, of course, into the imports and the definition of the actual component. And then uh, we have this setup function. Uh, I think it's an interesting approach. Um, it looks a bit more like Angular in terms of how the component just returns a whole function that replicates the state. But um, yeah, you see, just setting up this fab required uh, a lot of imports, importing the icon, adding this part and returning the icon. And now maybe, yeah, maybe I'm actually able to see the icon. So it really took a lot of steps for me. If you go through the quick start, um, this guide is actually pretty easy. I also tried to follow a real view guide, which was a bit more challenging. Um, I tried to use the CLI because the plain guide just starts really with just one file and there you go. And I'm really um, kind of used to having this massive setup from Angular anyway. So I'm not really afraid of this. These are already a lot less files than we usually see from uh, Angular, so I think that's just fine. Um, we will talk about uh, other differences later as well. For now, just let me say um, it looks basically the same, the result. Uh, if you check it out, Ionic Surf, Capacitor will work, everything will work. There might be some problems with a few components because it's still a beta, but in general, all of these things from Ionic now completely work with Vue. Now that we know that Vue works with Ionic, the question comes up, should you actually switch? Perhaps you're an Angular developer or a React developer, um, perhaps you're also a Vue developer, but the question is really, is there any benefit in using Vue above using Angular or a different framework? Because that's essentially for me the question, is there something I can get from Vue that Angular currently doesn't offer? I'm really happy with Angular. Um, I learn uh, new things still every week, so I'm still fine with Angular. And there are a few things if you check out the Vue docs compared to Angular. So. Uh, Vue, as you can see in here, is not really using TypeScript a lot. I think you can somehow make uh, TypeScript work in Vue applications and I think TypeScript is really great. So I personally like TypeScript and I really like the typings in my project. So I'm kind of sad that this is not implemented out of the box. In terms of the runtime performance, something you might consider that's actually basically the same for both Angular and Vue. Um, the size is a difference. I think Vue is a bit smaller if you see 30 compared to 65. Um, well, that is really not a huge difference. That's like one image less in your application. I think developers make other significant uh, mistakes when building the application. So I don't really feel like that's a huge argument for it. Um, flexibility. Yeah, Vue is definitely less opinionated. Uh, with Angular, you got the clear project structure, um, best practices all the time. Uh, you can generate stuff through the CLI and everything's put into the right places and you need to follow a certain structure with the modules. And I feel like Vue is really a lot easier in that uh, terms. That also, of course, means that the learning curve for uh, Vue is definitely uh, a lot easier. You just need to know a bit about HTML and JavaScript and perhaps CSS and then you're ready to build Vue application. For Angular, I kinda can understand that it might be challenging in the beginning. Right now, I have a lot of years experience with Angular, so I'm used to things, but um, just seeing this massive project in the beginning and how everything plays together, the router, components, services, injection, 
all of this is really challenging to learn and I agree that learning Vue might be a lot easier. But um, I think learning curve, uh, curve isn't really uh, something you should measure when you want to compare these frameworks. Yes, it might be easier for beginners, but is that really uh, a factor when building an enterprise application? I don't think so. Um, so for really important applications, there are other things that you should consider and not the learning curve. So while Vue seems to be uh, a bit easier to learn, although if you're just getting started, you also need to learn the Ionic stuff, I feel like it's missing a few elements that I'm used to from Angular. It feels a bit from the JS that I saw in other places like AngularJS, which is like a step back. And that's also what I heard uh, after I asked about this on Instagram. I got a lot of comments uh, from people some using Vue already or having used both Angular and Vue and actually most of them prefer to use uh, Angular because they saw it like a step back without using TypeScript. Um, you can see this as an advantage or disadvantage that you get uh, the template, the JavaScript and the CSS all in one file. For me, that's just really, I don't want to have it like this. I really like to separate things. It might look easier here at first, but you still got a lot of problems finding your stuff later in bigger files, I guess. So someone answered me who was doing both Angular and I, um, Vue that Vue kind of sits between Angular and React. It's not as strongly typed uh, and opinionated as Angular, but it still has the HTML part where uh, React has the JSX part, which can be a nightmare, as he said. I'm really not sure about that. I might give React a view. A view. <laughs> I might give React another try if you want to. Uh, let me know below the video and I will also check out React. But that's just my first impression I got. Okay, so first of all, I gotta say I'm really impressed. I'm not impressed by Vue, but I'm impressed by the Ionic team. The Ionic team managed to change their whole core with Ionic 4 so they can now easily adapt to other frameworks. They already released Ionic React and of course they had Ionic Angular and now the beta for Ionic Vue is out and you can also use Ionic with vanilla JavaScript. So I'm really, really impressed by everything the Ionic team does in terms of supporting other frameworks. Now, before trying out Vue, I really thought that Vue might offer something that is a lot easier, a bit more lightweight than Angular, but after checking out the first getting started guide, I kind of uh, missed a lot of things from Angular. I was missing TypeScript a lot. Uh, I was missing the clear separation between my TypeScript files, the HTML files, um, I actually got used to all the module stuff going on in my application. So at that point, I really feel like going to Vue for me as a kind of experienced Angular developer feels like a little step back. I don't know if that's really the case or if it's just a wrong false assumption I have. And if you have developed project with Vue, I would really love to get your opinion about this whole topic. So really, what's your impression about Vue? Have you used Vue in the past? What do you think in comparison to Angular or React? Do you plan to switch to Ionic Vue because it can do XYZ better than anything else? Or as an alternative, do you think that React might actually be the better option? I'm really not sure about this. I've now created uh, Angular content and courses for years, and I'm really not sure if I should get into a new framework like Vue or React in combination with Ionic or not, because most likely uh, the followers of this channel, the Ionic Academy, everyone's interested in Angular, but I I'm really open to hear your opinion about um, Ionic and the different framework. Let me know what you think about Vue, Ionic Vue, switching to Ionic Vue and anything about this and perhaps we can have a more detailed episode on using Ionic Vue in the future as well. So this week, of course, go out, install the Ionic CLI testing, uh, set up an Ionic Vue project, go through the first steps of their quick start guide and just give it a try and let me know your personal opinion about this right below the video. I hope you'll have a great week and of course, happy coding, Simon.